Well, welcome back to Faith Teen TV, speaking to the issues shaping our nation. And today we are discussing the surge of Canadians choosing homeschooling as their preferred educational option with Patty Marler of the Homeschool Legal Defense Association of Canada and Simon Noster of Wisdom Homeschooling. You as a parent know your child better than anyone else in the world. You've taught them to like tie their shoes. You've taught them um, all kinds of skills around the house. You're already an educator. So we can help you with those particulars and you can be an extremely successful educator for K through 12. People are beginning not only in the elementary years, but they're beginning in the junior high and even the high school years. They've discovered we can do this at home on our own and they are jumping in because they've seen how successful educating at home is and they're motivated to do that. Over the last few years, nationwide families choosing homeschooling as their preferred educational option is surging. According to Statistics Canada, in the 2020 to 2021 school year, homeschooling nationwide actually doubled to just under 84,000 children. Recent data has also revealed that public school enrollments have been decreasing in all provinces except for Quebec. An increase in the homeschooling choice was recorded by Statistics Canada Canada in almost every single grade, with the highest upswings being in grades one and two. Provincial governments have also become increasingly supportive in facilitating this option for families, with three provinces, British Columbia, Alberta, and Saskatchewan, offering governmental funding for families who choose to homeschool. Resources, curriculum, networks, and legal supports across the board are also on the rise as more and more families catch on to the benefits of this educational option. Well, here today to discuss the homeschooling world, the benefits, possible challenges, and resources for Canadians are Patty Marler and Simon Noster. Patty Marler represents the Homeschool Legal Defense Association of Canada. It's a nonprofit devoted to protecting, empowering, and advancing homeschool education in Canada in a variety of ways. Simon Noster is a personal case study for the success of this educational option. He was homeschooled from start to finish and then went on to earn a Bachelor's of Arts and a Bachelor's of Education in post-secondary universities. He taught in the separate school system but now serves as the principal of Wisdom Homeschooling, providing wonderful support and resources to homeschool families. I'm looking forward to this conversation. I hope you are too. Without any further delay, let's get to it. Well, Patty Marler, Simon Noster here to talk with us about this incredible opportunity that Canadians with kids have called homeschooling. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Well, we see the statistics from C to C. There is a surge of people that are waking up to the beautiful potential of this educational choice called homeschooling. So I know this conversation is going to be of interest to a lot of people today, but let's start with your organizations. What exactly, who exactly are you and what exactly do you provide for the homeschooling community across the board? Patty, why don't you go first? Sure. Um, I belong to um, the Homeschool Legal Defense Association and our sister organization, the Canadian Centre for Home Education. And we support, protect and advocate for homeschooling. So we really are a Canadian organization that works with um, all homeschoolers, we're uh, uh, all our member homeschoolers, and we help to support and advocate for homeschooling. An excellent website to get information is homeschool.today. This is a, a website that we've created to help people get all the answers that they need to find information about homeschooling, to find out where resources are, who to connect with in your province. Uh, so we have a lot of members across the country who come to us for information, support, protection. 
Yeah, and we're going to be talking more about that as well, why homeschoolers might need a legal defense association. Um, but Simon, your dad actually started a wisdom homeschooling. Tell us about it. What, what was the inception all about for your organization? Mm, very good. Well, there was a, a local school had employed my father to help with some home education supports because he happened to be a teacher and a home educating dad. And then uh, he was talking to a friend and his friend said, well, why don't you start your own where everyone can be a teacher and be homeschoolers themselves? So he thought that's a great idea. And so he started uh, Wisdom Homeschooling in uh, 1995. And uh, all of our teachers who work as facilitators all have direct home ed experience, uh, either as parents or as uh, graduates themselves. And that's fairly unique. And we've maintained that all the way through. So what we do in Alberta is we have um, a lot of support from our government, but also a lot of rules. And so Wisdom Homeschooling is the home ed branch of the Gilbertine Academy, and we help families uh, support them in any way possible so that they can focus not on the legislation, but on their kids. And what I find fascinating, Simon, about your family's story is, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I caught this on some of your online videos, that uh, your sister was brilliant and she was bored at school <laughs> and your dad basically uh, allowed her to, to come out of the public school system just so that she could excel and flourish academically at her own pace. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. It's the, uh, the, the classic idea that in a classroom, um, it's just a difficult model and you'll have some kids that are at the head of the class and they're bored and then some kids are struggling and you'll have, it's kind of the teachers aiming at as many kids as possible. And at, as a teacher myself, it's the struggle is real. Your intentions are the best, but the reality is difficult. And she was one of those kids that was, you know, understimulated by the classroom and bored to tears because she was already there and ready for the next step. And so my dad said, why am I, why am I doing this? I, I can, I'm a teacher, I can teach you at home. And then he realized, I don't need to be a teacher. I can teach you at home anyway. Wow, well, it sounds like your dad is not only a fantastic dad, but a fantastic teacher as well. What a service uh, to your sister. Now, let's talk about the homeschool surge across Canada. I was recently speaking to an elected official that said, you know, when COVID hit and we saw all the chaos with sort of start, stop and start schooling and a lot of parents actually found themselves basically homeschooling anyway, working at home and also having to do the online situation. And, and a lot of parents just saw that as an opportunity to say, hey, why don't I try this out? And now homeschooling is working for them. Are you seeing with your organizations the impacts of that surge? And uh, just tell us about the overall culture that you're observing in homeschooling in Canada today. Patty. Sure. I can tell you that we did research on homeschool numbers and we discovered that the homes, the number of people who homeschooled, who, who notified or registered as homeschoolers, uh, pretty much doubled across the, the country. And the, after COVID, ended or the some of the school restrictions ended, many people thought that those numbers would just go back to uh, the way they were. And that hasn't happened. There's been a slight drop off in numbers, but the uh, just only slightly, but then each year there's more and more new homeschoolers who are coming as well. And really interesting that people are starting homeschooling at different levels in their education, something that's somewhat unprecedented in the homeschooling world that we're seeing uh, across the country and internationally is that people are beginning not only in the elementary years, but they're beginning in the junior high and even the high school years that they've discovered we can do this at home on our own. And they are jumping in because they've seen how successful educating at home is and they're motivated to do that. So Simon, um, when people are reaching out to your organization and maybe they're saying, okay, I'm thinking about homeschooling. I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I'm strong enough. What do you say to that parent that's kind of feeling it, but is a little bit cautious about the journey? Well, we say that you as a parent know your child better than anyone else in the world. And so since you know them best, you know the way they learn best you know the, their interests the best. And so who is better equipped than you to educate them in you know, some of those matters that we usually farm out to teachers in a school? Because teaching them 
to speak. And maybe you've taught them to read at home already before school. You've done a lot of the heavy lifting. You've taught them to like tie their shoes. You've taught them um, all kinds of skills around the house. You've done all this work and then you hand them off to somebody else for the next step. But the next step isn't, isn't different. It's, it's this just different um, particulars, but you're already an educator. So we can help you with those particulars and you can be an extremely successful educator for K through 12. One thing that that's really interesting about people who've brought their kids home, similar to what Simon said, is that they have found, um, you know, after they've started homeschooling, many parents have found that a lot of the issues that they had in school have dissipated with their children. Um, I've talked to parents whose kids had headaches, that they had behavioral problems. Um, they've had um, been on medications and these have been either completely uh, alleviated or they've gone away. I've talked to parents who their own medical issues have been alleviated because there's so much less stress in their home. Their kids are happier. Their kids are more successful. And they themselves have are, are finding themselves physically healthier. And the, the learning, oh my goodness, sorry, the learning that they've, they've, many families have had to go back on their learning and say, I had no idea that my children didn't know this stuff. I've had to go back a year or two and cover material that they should have known. And they've brought them up one or two or even more years in several months. And they're just, feeling like, wow, the the things I missed when they were in school and the things that I'm able to accomplish while at home are amazing. Wow, that's incredibly encouraging and eye-opening as well. I want to talk about some of the hurdles, you know, some of the reasons why parents maybe uh, don't edge in this direction, even if their heart is kind of saying, yeah, this is something that probably would be great for my kids. You know, obviously, cost of living at an all-time high. A lot of families just can't make it if both mom and dad aren't working. And so what are some of the economic supports that are out there across the nation for that family that wants to uh, make this educational choice, but just doesn't know if they're going to be able to make ends meet unless mom and dad are both in the workforce. Patty, can you speak to that at all? Uh, sure. I mean, there's a lot in that question. Um, you know, first of all, when you come home, uh, some of your expenses are significantly less. There are uh, much fewer costs associated with having kids at home. You don't have to buy the same sort of level of, of school. You don't have to pay the same school fees. Um, the materials that you use, people can find incredibly economical materials uh, for their home education. There's a lot of uh, materials that, that uh, people can find and use. And then some families, you know, work from home. Both parents will work from home. They'll adjust their schedules. Uh, they, they make it work because they've seen how successful it is. And some people will just have one parent commit to homeschooling and then make uh, the, the adjustments or the sacrifices that they need. And many families have found it much more than worthwhile. Absolutely. Simon, the socialization question, I hear that a lot. Like, I'd love to homeschool, but my kids, they need to be around other kids. They need the sports, all that type of stuff in terms of their social development. What do you say to that parent that has that question? Mm. A beautiful thing about home ed students is they can have all of the types of socialization, not just socialization with their age level. We have socialization in um, across the family, across extended families, people of all ages, not just kids, not just kids in their grade. But beyond that, um, people might say, oh, sure, that's well and good. But what about all these other things? Uh, there is where there is a need, someone comes with a solution. And so there are home education support groups and sports teams. Uh, there are ways for home ed students to actually play on public school sports teams uh, in Alberta with the right uh, you know, paperwork being done, which is one of the things we help with. And so there are opportunities to have homeschool social activities, and these kids end up with far more deeper friendships than they would just going through and being with kids the same age in a class for the same number of hours every day. 
And and the definition of socialization, Simon, I'm sure you would agree. You know, some people think, well, it's just playing with other kids. Well, um, it's not. I mean, it's your involvement with volunteerism. It's your involvement with community organizations. It's involvement, you know, politically. It's involvement, you know, on many levels. So home educated children tend to be have a much uh, greater um, or, or a much more rounded social socialization than many of their peers uh, who are in institutionalized learning. So the socialization opportunities for for home ed students is actually uh, a great uh, component of home education. It wasn't just that Toby Lauren was bored to tears. She decided to quit school because she lost her love of learning. But to keep the love of learning is the number one thing. And that's something that parents can do from day one. We love Canada, and we want to see it strong for generations to come. That's why we do this show. We can't do it alone. We need your help. Unlike commercial TV, this program is 100% donor-funded. If you'd like to see more episodes produced on important issues for our nation, please consider signing up to be a monthly partner or giving a special gift today. Every gift makes a real difference, and all gifts are tax-deductible. Together, we can build a better Canada for the future. Visit fayteen.tv or call 1-866-844-0844 to donate today. Now, Patty, you're the organization that you work with, the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. Some people might hear that and say, why do homeschoolers need legal defense? Like, is there something here we should be aware of? Can you speak to that? So we have lawyers on staff who our members have 24-7 access to. So if social services uh, shows up at, at your door, or if a, if a doctor has concerns, um, if, you, um, uh, if an education system, um, one of the provincial education system challenges your, uh, your homeschooling, we're there to help. We're there to help you to homeschool well. We provide services so that you can... Um, um, log your homeschooling, keep track of what you're doing so that if your homeschool is ever challenged, then we can protect you well. And so we help people to do that. So that's a part of the supporting so that if legal intervention is ever happening, uh, then we can, you know, very easily protect you. Wonderful. Now, is this common that, that that even becomes an issue or is it just really the the odd scenario where someone might find themselves in a situation where they need your services? Well, it, it's much more common than you would think. We get you know, a couple calls a week of people who need our legal services. Um, much of the work that we do, uh, our lawyer says she would much rather prevent an interaction than have to do that, you know, that emergency call that she gets. So we do a lot of work to help homeschoolers to build their homeschool, to have a strong homeschool so that they won't need that legal assistance. But like I said, a couple times a week, our lawyer is involved in stuff, even though we do so much work to help people to prevent the need for that. And as I understand it from your website, you have a wonderful success rate, though. Is that correct? Oh, yes. I mean, typically when our uh, lawyer gets involved, it takes um, a couple quick calls uh, for her to interact with an agency that may be overstepping and overreaching. She's able to work with, with, um, with our uh, members. We have uh, curriculum consultants, exceptional needs consultants, home education experts who are able to help people with their homeschooling. So there is a lot of service that's provided and our legal team is there, you know, when push comes to shove and you need someone to, uh, a lawyer there to step in on your behalf. 
Well, and to be honest, this is also encouraging because I think a lot of Canadians don't realize the magnitude of the support that's out there for them because of great organizations like yours. And you're really just the tip of the iceberg. There are associations all across Canada serving uh, the community, that uh, the, uh, those that choose this as their educational choice. Um, let's go back to the curriculum question, though, as well, and where do people start? So, uh, you know, Simon, somebody calls you, you pick up the phone, they're like... I, I got to figure this out. I got to figure out what to teach my third grader next year. Uh, mm. Where do you tell that parent to start in terms of just getting rolling? We have some very knowledgeable office staff here. So the first, the first people they'll talk to are some beautiful people who work in our office that all of whom had experience. And they'll say, well, what, what does Johnny like? What are Sally's interests? What kind of, what have you noticed? They'll kind of give them kind of a, a, a first over of, okay, we think this might be a good resource just to get you going. And then we're going to connect you with your home education facilitator, which is a certificated teacher who is also a home ed parent or graduate. And they're going to help you as well. And we're going to give you some resources, some websites like homeschool.today or the aheaonline.com, which is the Alberta Home Education Association. And of course, our own website, wisdomhomeschooling.com. And we will provide these and say, just spend some time. Don't be overwhelmed. You don't have to do it immediately. We're going to help you get something to cover the bases. And then we're going to visit and we're going to make sure it's working. If it's not, we're going to change it. And so all of a sudden, we, we take the pressure off. Here's a little something to get going. Just focus on this one thing. Do some reading, do some math. And then we'll come in and help make a, a plan that fits that child, fits their interests, and fits where they're at. And most importantly, something that keeps their love of learning alive. Because that, if I cycle back to the beginning of that story, it wasn't just that Toby Lauren was bored to tears. She decided to quit school because it was she was done with school. Because she lost her love of learning. But to keep the love of learning is the number one thing. And that's something that parents can do from day one. You know, Simon talked about, you know, working towards a, a child and their child's needs and the child's, you know, interests. Uh, and you talked about different methods on, on homeschool.today on the website. We have listed a variety of home education methods. So parents will come in with their own ways of doing things. Some are introspective, some are more outgoing. And so different teaching methods will work for different parents and for for different students. Different, different students need different approaches. So you can look at the variety of ways to teach your kids at homeschool.today under the educational resources. You know, what sort of a learner do I do I have? What sort of a, of a teacher am I? And, and then we help connect you, uh, uh, especially people out, you know, people uh, that Simon is talking about are people in Alberta. Outside Alberta, people, uh, and inside Alberta, but people can look at the educational resources uh, providers uh, that are across the country. There's excellent bookstores, homeschool bookstores and sellers who can talk to people and say, you know, what, what does your child like? What kind of ways do they learn? And then they can help connect people to educational materials that will work well for those students. Similar to what Simon does in Alberta, many, you know, these educational resources will, or resource providers will do this for other people outside of that province. Well, this is also fascinating. Now, we're, we're just, we're starting to close in on our time here, but I do have a couple more questions I want to ask you both. Now, for our elected officials, how can they support Canadians that make this educational choice? We know that there are at least three provinces that help out financially. Uh, what would be your encouragement to uh, ministers of education across the nation right now on this one? There's research that shows that uh, additional regulation doesn't make homeschool any better. In fact, there's a slight hindrance to the success of homeschool with increased regulation. So parents don't pull their kids to let them sit at home. Parents, invested parents is the number one indicator of success of students in school. So when you have a parent who's so involved that they're homeschooling, those kids have a great, great chance at flourishing. So when we allow parents 
to uh, to choose the materials that work for them, to to um, choose to work to their students' capabilities. These kids are going to thrive. So more regulation isn't better uh, in home education. Word, uh, Simon. Anything to add to that? What I would love to see is recognition of home education completion, so that students don't feel like they can homeschool until high school and then, oh, I need to get that diploma because someone might not hire me someday because I don't look like I've completed things because they don't have an Alberta high school diploma necessarily because you may, as an Alberta home ed student, achieve that or you may choose not to. But what we'd love to see is across the board something officially recognized saying that, yes, this home education student has followed the rules They've done a beautiful job, and now they can say, I have completed this education to the satisfaction of businesses and institutions. And again, on the same, in this, on the same vein, have alternate admissions for home education students to universities, something like the SAT or the CLT, which is quite common in the States, have something like that across the board, and not just at select universities, because there are more and more choices now in Alberta and beyond for home ed students traditionally homeschooled all the way through to get into their university of choice, but it's not across the board and we'd like to see it across the board. Hey, well, those are all incredible points of input for our leaders. Thank you so much. Any final words for our viewers as we close today? Um, I would just encourage families to go to homeschool.today. We have dozens, like dozens of frequently asked questions about homeschooling that are listed on the homeschool.today website, where you can go and at, you know, read information about homeschooling there and get many of your questions answered. And I'd like to say that whether you've been thinking about home education for years, or you've just thought about it today for the first time, you can start this fall homeschooling. You can start today homeschooling. And if you happen to live in Alberta, you can visit wisdomhomeschooling.com and we can help you start today. And there is nothing that will stand in your way if you wish to pursue this. Well, thank you for those encouraging words. Patty Marler, Simon Noster, really appreciate your time today and the conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining me once again this week. I don't know about you, but I was so encouraged about the benefits of homeschooling and all of the supports provided for those who choose this as an educational option for their family. If you appreciated today's conversation with Patty and with Simon, and perhaps you want to watch it again or maybe even share it with some of your friends and loved ones, simply go to fateen.tv to find this program as well as other previous episodes. If you want to continue to see conversations like today's on air. We would appreciate your support so that we can keep at it. We say it every week, but it's always worth mentioning as a nonprofit TV show, we're only able to stay on air every week because of the generous gifts of our monthly partners and our regular donors. You're the ones that make this happen. So if you would like to become a monthly partner, maybe increase your giving or give a special gift today, every amount makes such a difference. Simply go to fateen.tv to give securely online or call our team at one 866 Six eight four four zero eight four four, and someone will be waiting and honored to chat with you and even pray for you and your personal needs. Lastly, don't forget that we have a few ways you can ensure that you never miss a show. Sign up for our email list at 18.tv or download our smartphone app. And when you do either of those, you will be notified every single time that a new show is released so that you never miss an episode. Thanks again for taking some time with us today. Hope to see you again next week. Until then, take care and God. God bless.